Greetings, my little Riculagus caniculuses. I'm Saba Black Sheep. Have you any soul? No, sir, no, sir. But I did turn your favorite SCPs into DILFs. The lineup we have today is SCP-173, the first SCP ever in the peanut himself. SCP-106, the crusty, rusty man already coming in hot with his old man aesthetic. Last and least, SCP-035, the goddamn mask. Ugh. But before I show you such masterpieces, consider committing arson on the like and subscribe button. Alrighty, let's go. First up, SCP-173, the large peanut-shaped concrete statue. Only reason why he's tall, dark, and handsome is because somehow this thing produces more shit than the average American politician. I hope you're into breath play because this lad likes to snap any neck that isn't giving him attention. When dilfifying him, I didn't really know what to do, so I just kind of made him Lex Luthor with two sets of eyes. You're welcome, Superman. Better be watching his tail unless he wants to see in new directions. Did you know it takes over a thousand pounds of pressure to break the human neck? For you British people, that's like over 200,000 tea bags. And for you Frenchies, that's like a little less than your mother. Maybe that explains the fatherless behavior. Anyway, the design for 173 is actually an art piece made by Izumi Kato. <laughs> Kato was the name of Joseph Stalin's first wife. She was Georgian. He had one son with her before she died two years later into their marriage, I think. Either way, he sent that son to a concentration camp. Very Georgian core, I guess. Anyway, turns out the original statue has a wee-wee, so that's cool, I guess. The SCP community has been looking for new designs for this goofy lad for a while, because the original artist thinks it's kind of weird. A memorial piece he made is being used for internet horror. Understandable. Anyway, here's my application for the new 173 design. Enjoy, daddy issue havers. SCP-106. The old man. I don't even have to do anything to make this guy a dilf. He's been rocking the old fox look since the 1940s. For you creepy patriotic folk, he's been in the war and known for being socially weird as hell. As a fellow artist, I can relate, but like, come on man, just because it's hard to talk to people like a normal person does, I don't turn into a rust monster and kidnap them. Then again, they don't teach us enough about life paths growing up. It's always go to college, learn a trade, or work at McDonald's for your whole life. 106 is paving a new path for us neurodivergent individuals. If I knew I could just have been a murderous anomaly this whole time, I wouldn't have wasted so much time in my schooling arc. When I was a wee whippersnapper in middle school, 11 years old, I was what the teachers like to call can't fucking read. They put me in a special class. They made us do these like online programs that was like really easy and like they were like a series of games to learn English or something. Before the dark day dawned upon me, when they told me, I had to sing a childish song to learn my verbs or something. I refused. I could feel my ego thrashing against its cage at the slightest thought of singing that stupid song. I was 11 years old. I was too good for mere mortal music. The class ended and the teacher had yet given up the battle. She pulled me into a small room and said, Saba, you have to sing this song. It's a part of the curriculum. Why are you so bothered? I respond. I feel like it insults my intelligence. She says, come on, Saba. I'll sing it with you. She kept trying to convince me for a while until I burst out into tears, unable to control my sobs. And she asks, why are you crying? And I said, no joke, exact words. I'm a middle schooler. It's within our nature to be overly emotional. We cry over anything. She let me go to my next class after that. In that moment, I could have used SCP-106. If I knew I could have just kidnapped and ate people on the walls rather than sing a stupid song, I would have had a very different life by now. Anyway, here's SCP-106 as a dill. SCP-35 is hua of an SCP is a silly little mask that can take over your body and mind. He's known for having the charisma of your average overly touchy cult leader. For some reason, the young fangirly simp over this porcelain toilet ass looking mask because I don't know, he insults people. Gen Z has a weird thing for beings that make them feel like shit and take their power away. I'm no therapist, but I assume there's some parental dysfunction in your life that led you to this video in the first place that might explain why I'm so I can't pass too much judgment. If your heart goes doki doki for SCP-35, seek help today. Or better yet, complain in the comments. 
For his design, I wanted to capitalize on the you're my bitch energy, but I ended up just accidentally making him look sad, which I would also be very sad if I was forced to be him. So yeah. Anyways, I thought I had daddy issues and then I saw this thing and I was cured immediately because I'd rather play hopscotch with my uterus than look at SCP-35 longer than a millisecond. Anyway, to get all feminist for a sec, why is daddy issues something to make fun of women over when they only have them because of the failing of the men in their life? Like, people be like, you had daddy issues, ah ha ha, I bet you have a bad relationship with your father when the girl has like a nose piercing. I mean, personally, my dad's subscription to breathing ran out when I was 13, so it's not like he went to buy milk or anything. I had a great relationship with him. The only point of tension with him was when I was 12, I asked him his views on gay marriage, and he said, it ain't my business if they want to be life partners, but marriage is of the church and shouldn't even be a part of the government. And I said, but there's marriages in a lot of non-Christian cultures. Did you know pirates used to get gay married? He told me to drop it after that. I guess he couldn't handle gay pirates. Years after his death, when I was 17, I went through his Facebook posts and comments out of curiosity. He was an internet troll this whole time. My dead dad was an internet troll. I never felt prouder to be of his blood in that very moment. Though his trolling sided on like a tad right wing, so like I don't really vibe with that, but like mm, I guess he has the spirit. He'd post these awful extreme conservative right wing memes and when liberal people respond, he'd fucking gaslight them. Gaslight them. It'd go something like this, the meme. MTFs want to prey on your wives and daughters in the bathroom? The commenter, this is not true. What is wrong with you? My father, I understand where you're coming from, but I believe it's imperative to have respect for each other as fellow homo sapiens. Naturally, there's nuances, and anyone possessing a fair amount of neurons would concur that this post was merely one aspect of a multifaceted reality. Like, what? Bro, you can't just invalidate a whole community, get called out for it, then gaslight them into the being the bigot? That's not how this works! Unironically hilarious, though. Now homie control from purgatory, I guess. Anyway, here's your dilf mask thingy. A jig, yeah. If you watch this entire video, you're weird. And I like that about you. As always, you have school tomorrow, or work, or discovering your well-respected doctor of a father was an internet troll this entire time. Either way, don't dream about wheat byproducts.